Hello and welcome to Real Opinions and today I'm going to be doing a flashback review of The Blair Witch Project, a film that I have seen before. I didn't really like it the first time I saw it but I thought I'd give it another shot because obviously Blair Witch is coming out now and I wanted to kind of re-familiarise myself with this film in advance. So this is a film that for better or worse has influenced cinema to an insane degree. Not just horror films but cinema. It basically invented viral marketing and to some extent it's responsible for the found footage movement. Sure it didn't create the idea of found footage movies as many people will point out uh you had uh cannibal holocaust in 1980 and then you also had a film called the last broadcast that actually came out like a year before blair which is really weird because it has a similar-ish idea it's, it's also set in the forest it's about people investigating a legend in that case it's the jersey devil not the blair witch but that film to be fair isn't strictly found footage it's actually a faux documentary so i, I don't quite count Found footage and mockumentaries is the same thing. Also, that film actually is terrible. <laughs> and, um, and it kind of entirely flips, goes into third person at the end and, and just drops its found footage uh, thing. So this this is among the first films to be entirely found footage either way. And regardless of how you look at it, first or not, it's definitely the one that started the trend that we now live in. So there's uh, some stuff I like about this movie, but... Obviously, the thing with The Blair Witch is that it's become an easy target to hate. Some people hate this movie because it basically it started the era we live in now. And a lot of people really don't like found footage movies because a lot of them are crummy. And it's very easy to sort of turn to The Blair Witch and point fingers and go, you did this, you ruined horror. And then there's equally people who love this movie and, you know, they obsess over the fan theories and they can't stop reading into it and they're terrified by it. And it feels like no matter where you go on the internet, you will encounter only these two camps, people who love The Blair Witch and people who hate The Blair Witch. You, you have to pick a side and I just so happen to be that one guy who is like, Eh, this is stuff I like, as I said. For for a start, I actually really like the first half of the movie. I didn't remember... Uh, I def I will say I liked this movie more when I returned to it. And and part of the reason is for this first half, where, where they interview people. They in where they interview the locals of the town. And they kind of ask them about the Blair Witch. And about what the legend is. And you get all these different accounts that are all slightly twisted or slightly contrasting to each other. And, you know, one person's like, oh, she's like a goat lady. And then another person's like, it's just an old woman that floats. And they talk about these weird murders that happened in the, um, in the 40s. And they talk about missing children. And they talk about these weird bodies that they found ritualist ritualistically slaughtered. And they're all different stories that don't seem to be connected. It's just everyone's different idea of what the Blair Witch is and you're left wondering so what is it is it this is it this is it that is there a connection between any of these things or or is only one of them um applicable and that stuff I found really interesting because I always talk about how I don't think horror I think horror should be careful about providing backstories because if you give away too much something can not be scary but if you don't give away enough then there's no story engagement and here what it does is it gives you lots of different possibilities and doesn't tell you which and they're all quite scary backstories i really liked this part where they were interviewing them and generally i liked the part of the film where they were actually making their own documentary as someone who has a background in making videos uh you know i've made a couple of short films they're crap don't look for them i i found the drama about the filmmaking actually more engaging than the drama about the horror. I was interested in whether or not they would get their audio equipment across the log. I cared if they would get this guy's consent to be uh, filmed for the interviews. I really, really was involved in whether or not they'd be able to finish their film. And <laughs> I got really upset when they kind of dropped that part because that part was interesting to me. I, I, I liked them making the film and I found it that the horrors of amateur filmmaking scarier than anything that happened in the Burkittsville uh, would. I also thought that the acting was genuinely good. I know there's a, fans of this movie always talk about how innovatively it was directed, where the, where basically these these actors were just let loose in the woods. They were given a bit of direction, but were basically surprised with scares and were working off a sort of improvisational thing where they would be surprised by things too. And that means you get really raw performances, and they are really good. I will 
100% admit to that. Everyone in this film gives a really good, really realistic performance. And I think that when, you know, when it first, when this first came out and some people thought it was real, I think you can attribute that entirely to the performances. That stuff, all good. I like the sort of opening half hour. I think it sets up an intriguing mystery. I like the acting. What don't I like? Everything else. I know it's become so, so, so generic and cliche to mock this part of the film, but the map hunting section of this film is so damn frustrating. It's basically, I. this is at least 40 minutes of the film. I'm going to act out 40 minutes of the film for you. Where's the map? What do you mean, where's the map? You have the map. No, 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 I gave the map to you. No, no, you took the map. What do you mean you took the map? Just tell me where the map is. No, I don't know where the map is. The map was useless anyway. No, you've got the map. If you just tell me that you've got the map, then the joke's over, and we can fire it. No, where's the map? You tell me where the map is. I don't know where the map is. Then indistinguishable shouting as everyone goes, blah, 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 map, blah, 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 map. And then they'll wander through the woods a bit, and then the exact same argument will happen again. And it's so repetitive. It's so frustratingly repetitive. And everything takes place in daylight. And nothing scary happens in the daytime sections of the Blair Witch. It's just people arguing arguing repetitively and there's like three sequences in the film that are actually set at night where you hear the creepy noises the rest of it is just people walking through the woods being scared annoyed at each other and bored there's a bit that i thought was really cool where one of the characters says um oh last night i heard this weird cackling when i was trying to sleep and i thought oh that's scary i hope that happens in this film i hope i hear that cackling at night you don't hear it. You don't hear it. And that's symptomatic of this whole film. It's just people talking about the scary things that happen, but you don't get to see them at all. I like The Haunting, the original 1960 Haunting. That's a good example of implied horror. Does it all through sound. You get a sense of what's there, but you don't see anything, and it's scary as hell. This film takes the piss. This film doesn't show you a thing. There, there is a point where you go from implying stuff, and eventually you actually have to show something. Like I said... A couple of sequences at night where you hear some noises is not enough for me, I'm sorry. You might think I'm an idiot, but that's just that's just the truth. It's so repetitive, and so much of it is just these characters being annoying. The best part of this movie is 100%, 100% the ancillary stuff. The marketing stuff that was designed around the film that expands and develops the lore. That stuff is genuinely fascinating. There's like courtroom interviews, there's journals, documentaries, there's even like a series of survival horror video games. And all these things kind of develop upon the things that the people in the town were talking about. And all of those things are so much more engaging than what is in the film. I like this stuff so much. And it makes reading the Blair Witch wiki or looking at videos on YouTube really kind of thrilling because you you want to sort of engage in this stuff you want to find answers and it makes me want to like the film more because i like this stuff and i'm reading this stuff and i'm going like oh i want to watch the film again but then i remember the film is boring and it's this this ancillary stuff and all the fan theories and all the all the mysteries that make me want to see the new blair witch because you might be wondering if you don't like this film why are you going to go see the new one two reasons adam wingard is a great director Second reason, I want to see if this new film will expand upon any of these theories, or if it will confirm any of them, or if it will do anything with this backstory, because it's interesting. This stuff is what works for me. There's all this stuff about Rustin Parr, like the this serial killer who took kids and made one of them stand in the corner while he did murders, and then he'd get the one who stood in the corner and kill them too, and that stuff is creepy. That stuff is intriguing. All the stuff about the Blair Witch is intriguing, but that's not what this film is. This film is people lost in the woods yelling at each other. It's, it's just tedious, and I'm sorry. I really want to like this film, but I just can't. And the ending for me... Uh, it's it's the definition of anticlimax. I know some people think it's one of the scariest endings ever. Uh, no, it's 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 nothing. It it's it's such an anticlimax, and I'm afraid that ambiguity and uh, suggestion can only go so far. And at some point, I need you to actually do something. So this film gets a five out of ten for me, even though I am really immersed in all the mysteries and all the all the other stuff that isn't the actual film itself. I hope that I like the new film. From what I've heard, it's very much the same thing, though. But who knows? I just... I I, I think there is potential here that is wasted on just a really stupid decision to have half the film be people arguing over a fucking map. <laughs>